Hi, my name is Burak Menigray from CLC Group and today I'm going to be talking about our recently launched Honeycomb Marketplace and how it can be used to create Chainlink smart contracts. So, we see the Chainlink ecosystem as a combination of three equally important groups which are the smart contract developers, the node operators and the API providers. And for a successful Chainlink use case to come into life, all these three groups have to work together and our objective in building the Honeycomb Marketplace is to create a venue where these groups can come together and do business and remove the friction in between so that they can do business efficiently. So as you know, we already have partnered with a lot of APIs and in the recent days we have partnered with a lot of staking nodes. So what we are planning to do right now is we are launching the smart contract developer facing part of the Honeycomb marketplace so uh, people can start building Honeycomb like smart contracts powered by Honeycomb served data as soon as possible so that using that direction we can get more API providers and more node pages and in turn more smart contract developers. So that's why today I'm going to be talking about how a smart contract developer would be using the Honeycomb Marketplace. So we, we basically looked at this as a five step procedure. So the first one is you go to the API page and you look at the APIs and their endpoints and their documentations. So right now we have listed 10 APIs at this stage. In the next few days we are going to be adding the rest and also we are going to be adding the partnered nodes. So if you look at these APIs, you can click on them and like there are some endpoints and to find out what these endpoints serve, you go to the API documentation with the link here. And this is a typical API documentation page. You would, for, for example, look at this is matches endpoint. It is actually here. You can get that data for point 113 link. And these are, for example, the parameters that you feed to this endpoint. So you go through the APIs and endpoints and documentations to either find the kind of data that you're looking for for the use case you have in mind or maybe you don't have anything in mind and just you're looking at the data sources to get inspired about the use case. Either way, you start by looking at the APIs. And the next step is testing. So we have realized that even if you are like serving a kind of data on mainnet unless you can provide a way for the smart contract developer to test it it is not very useful because as a smart contract developer you want to first try out the endpoint see what kind of data it returns and for example if you want weather data then you for example want to use API A but I mean, are you sure that the API A is providing weather data outside of the US? It may not. You need to test that. So, both to find out the uh, input format and the response format, but also the kind of data that the API is going to deliver, you have to test the API. Obviously, one way of doing that is providing testnet calls. So, if a node is serving data on the mainnet, they should also be serving that on the testnet for free, which is, I don't think most people are ready to be able to provide that, but I mean, we see that as an absolute necessity, which, we, which is why we are doing that. And we also took that one step further and we are also allowing you to test the endpoints through the user interface, because for example, let's say you made a request to an endpoint on the testnet, but you didn't get the response back. So the problem may be either at the node end or the API end. 
But as a smart contract developer, it may not be as transparent to you as it is to an older operator. So it is quite difficult to find that out. So if you can um, call the API directly instead of calling it through the node, you would be able to get a lot more transparent connection to the API. So let's try that out right now. For example, let's say I want to use civic feed and I want to use news slash search. And I go to the documentation page to find out the parameters. So here it says Q, what you want to search, sources from to a lot of parameters. We enter them as a JSON object. So let's say Q is Bitcoin. And what else? Let's, let's get a single result with the highest score. So we will say results one score sort score which is here. The parameter name is sort and you can use either of these. And I use this one. So I enter the parameters and click execute. And this is the result that our external adapter returns to the node. So we are using the external adapter to make this call. For example, let's say I want to get how many Bitcoin articles there are from my smart contract. Then I would get so this is the outer curly brace. I don't want articles. I want results. So I would get, I would set copy path as results. And I would probably get this as an unsigned integer. So th this is why you need the interface testing because it is quite difficult because while you are doing this over testnet, you already have to know this parameter to be able to make the call. So this is quite important. So let me go over again. One, you browse through the APIs. Two, you test it through this model. And third is, you can test it on the testnet. So here, I click on network, perhaps. And as I said, I want unsigned integer. And this is our listing. Uh, right now we are providing the testnet listings. We are planning to let other nodes provide these. So if you are already familiar with Chainlink smart contracts, you know what to do with this information. You get the Oracle address, you get the job ID, you get the price. And if you are not, I'm also going to post another video. You can watch that. So basically this call is for free. You can, as you have tried it through the interface, you can try it on the testnet for free. This was the third stage. The fourth stage is implementing it on the mainnet as you did on the testnet. And it is quite similar to what you did on testnet. Again, there are listings, but this time this is link in, this is in real link, and this is the US dollar equivalent of it. What you can do here is that you can either use a single listing, like in a trusted Oracle setup, or there are going to be multiple listings here. So you can deploy your own aggregator, calling each of these listings. And what else you can do is, you can set up an aggregator that gets, for example, two results from these listings and like get three results from other listings. For example, they can come from another listing service. They can be your own node 
So you have like opportunity to pick and choose the way you want to use this. And like this is the first step, but not the last step, because the final step is when this doesn't satisfy your needs. So for example, for this endpoint, we are providing four pre-made jobs. But the problem is, this may not satisfy your needs. You may need something a little more specific than this, then this job wouldn't be of use to you. Another problem may be that you have like very specific technical requirements. For example, you need the request to be answered in 30 minutes rather than 300 minutes. Sorry, 30 seconds rather than 300 seconds. Another thing may be that you may want the node operators to host the external adapters rather than using third-party external adapters. Or maybe we don't list the API that you're looking for yet. And there are like a lot of other possibilities where the marketplace cannot satisfy your needs. Then what we, what we do is you just write to us and we talk over it. We expect like the, all, a lot of the use cases are going to have specific needs and we are ready to create solutions that are tailor-made to your exact needs. So the five steps of getting a chaining use case to life is one, you come up with the use case the smart contract by looking at the APIs or finding the APIs that you for the use case that you already had in mind on the marketplace to test out these endpoints to make sure that they are what you're looking for. Three, implement your contract on testnet and try it out with our listings. Four, deploy that on mainnet and demonstrate some traction and let us and the node operators and the API providers see that your use case is indeed being used. And fifth is, we get those node operators and API providers to provide the exact kind of service that you're looking for to make an like, ultimately decentralized, trustless, and very heavily reliable kind of smart contract. So this was all what I'm going to talk about. What you can expect in the next few days is we are going to be adding APIs, we are going to be adding node partners and their job listings, and we are going to be presenting at uh, Web3 Summit in Berlin. We are going to be presenting some use cases that are made available using these job listings that you see. So thanks for listening and start building.